think it takes some confidence to risk a photo opportunity like this. I'm not sure if confidence sort of is the right word, you know, probably it's slightly foolhardy at the time, but I got away with it. She's contemplating holding the balance of power in Westminster because an epic SNP project to occupy Labour's hallowed terrain is on the verge of triumph. Where back in 1919 early Labour protesters were cleared away by the army, you find Nicola Sturgeon now cheered. Nearly 100 years on, the Labour Party is facing the prospect of being swept out of its heartlands in Glasgow and all over Scotland. Not cleared away this time by tanks, but by a 44-year-old Ayrshire-born woman at the head of a political party that currently pulsates with the sort of energy that the Labour movement used to know. I know the polls are suggesting all sorts of, uh, you know, fantastic and, you know, I use that word deliberately, results for the SNP. Albanian style. I Well, look, this is a democracy and people will vote and the SNP will get as many seats as the people of Scotland want us to have. Born in a Labour heartland, she joined the SNP in her teens. Labour, it seems, even then wasn't radical enough. And Labour wasn't Blairite back then. Well, but it just had Kinnock, Michael's foot. Kinnock had, had already view. started that drift away from what I would have thought He'd to be He'd gone core. too far to the right Labour, Well, no, I was 16 years old at this time, remember. You know, nuclear weapons was a big issue for me. It still is. I'm very opposed to nuclear weapons. Kinnock had already changed the Labour's view on unilateral nuclear disarmament. 30 years on, Nicola Sturgeon insists Labour's current leader, Ed Miliband, will have to talk to her and her MPs if he leads a minority government. They're going to have to wake up and smell the coffee on May the 8th. But and it means realize acknowledging that you're you cannot, the party of Scotland that they used to be. But and that's a horrible but, moment for them. But signing a, well, it may be an uncomfortable moment, but if they've got any sense, they'll very quickly decide to respect the fact that that's how the people of Scotland have voted. And if they try to somehow pretend that that hasn't happened, or that somehow the votes of Scotland, because we've voted SNP rather than Labour, are less legitimate, then... You've talked about radicalising uh, a Labour government, well, holding they, them truer to radical well, principles. Uh, you, you take but, austerity. But, but, but could you, when you were in a minority government, uh, did nobody else managed to radicalise or de-radicalise you, or, well, or, or actually there were change many, no, the that's shape not true. of we, the we, government? We, we lost what they did was one-on-one -on -one deals uh, on particular policies. You did a pick and mix and went round, and that's what they. We, we, we had to we had to build a majority for, for every, each issue. And you know, if the numbers are such that the SNP has a large number of of MPs in the House of Commons, then. A, la a minority Labour government would have to reach out and win support from the SNP. You know, on some issues, you, and then they'd go shopping somewhere else when well, it was another issue. You won't necessarily radicalise them. You, you might you come back empty-handed. You, you don't prevail on everything, but you can use your influence to win the things that matter to you. Could success bring its own problems? The former head of Better Together thinks her new MPs could be difficult to manage. Her tens of thousands of new supporters might want a referendum faster than she'd like. She will only want to call a referendum if she thinks she can win and she might think that's some considerable way down the track. But unfortunately for her, that her supporters uh, believe that they're going to get you know, a referendum on independence tomorrow morning if they could get away with it. Amongst the wealth of new members you've got, uh, and it's difficult to know quite what all their opinions are, but we know when I've they... I've got a better idea now than I did straight after I've met many of them But now. we know they joined in that referendum yeah, period. They were excited by it. They're going to want an earlier referendum than maybe you feel I, comfortable I, giving them. The, I don't know that that's an accurate or fair characterisation. People generally, and I'm, I'm generalising here... How long do you think you can here, hold them off for? I, but it's not like that. We will, we will take decisions that we consider to be right for the Scottish people. Some think Nicola Sturgeon will always be more risk-averse than the keen gambler Alex Salmond, even if she did win an amazing tally of seats. Are you spooked at all by the notion of winning every single seat in Scotland? I don't think that will happen but you know if if it does happen if it was to happen it's because the scottish people have chosen it to happen if you had all the mps in westminster available in all the scottish seats or anything like it would you um loosen the reins a bit on message discipline in the party i, don't, I because I don't it does seem incredibly that characterization tight. of of the SNP. i mean you you've witnessed I think you've been at SNP campaign events. You know, our, our campaign is, is a world apart from, you know, the, the Westminster party. But I've also been to Holyrood it's... and I don't remember seeing an SNP MSP stand up and criticise You should the come leader. more often. Something the cast list of potential SNP MPs will more than take care of any control freak tendencies. And right now, of course, Labour would kill for such worries.